Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kevtech here, bringing another video on information technology. Hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over um, landing a job in IT, specifically IT support, help desk desktop support for 2024. I had to make an updated version of this because things have changed throughout uh, last year and the year before. So I got to make a new video on this. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. So, um, making a video on this because right now, um, you see like this this strange um back like the way the job market is is like a little strange just some people are getting jobs some people are not getting jobs some people have been unemployed for 30 days 60 days 90 days 120 days so it's like is the job market like messed up or people are still getting jobs like what's going on so i um i did coaching with one of my students and i, I literally uh trained him he signed up with me for training. So he literally just landed at a job last week. So people are still getting jobs. It's just one out of three or four people that I train. So people are still getting jobs in IT. Um, the job market is a little wonky because it's like um, you have to you have to know more than now, more now than ever. Like you have to know people. Um, your network is very important right now. Like there are hundreds and hundreds of applicants applying for the same job that have the a plus certification they have the same they all have the same certifications so it's like what makes you different from the other candidates like we have candidates applying for the same job but everyone has the same certification right so let me number one for me is going to be how are you different from the other candidates question mark how are you different because like at the end of the day you go for a job you go for a job into you and if you're answering the question and you're giving everyone the same generic answer versus 20 other people that are behind you giving the same answer, there's no way they're going to remember you. They're going to remember who you are and everything. He's going to go with somebody else. So at the end of the day, it's, it goes back to um, being a salesperson. Like, and I'm not saying that you I'm not saying that uh, you work in sales. I'm saying that every person applying for a job, they're technically a salesperson because you have to know how to sell yourself. If you don't know how to sell yourself, then no one's going to hire you. It's just the reality of, of jobs and IT. They have to like you in order, in order for them to get you, if that makes sense. So that's very important. Um, and then I say, like, that's number one. Like you're Learning how to sell yourself is very important. Learn And number two is going to be, for me, it's going to be your LinkedIn profile. So your LinkedIn is extremely important. Like, like put your, your update your LinkedIn profile picture, update your LinkedIn banner. You can use Canva for free. Update your summary. Maybe use ChatGBT to help you a little bit with that. And then edit it. Obviously, it'll make it look like it's from ChatGBT. Um, add your... Uh, license and certifications on the top. Uh, enable um, enable creator mode on it. There's a way to do that. Uh, if you're a veteran, you could get uh, LinkedIn Premium for a year. You could just Google that online. Um, certain certain things are free if you're a student as well. So like you want to take advantage of the LinkedIn profile, build it out, put your project work in there, put your certifications in there. If you have any recommendations, like someone recommended you, make sure it's there as well. Put your job, your job experience, what you're doing, where you're working at, et cetera, et cetera. So your LinkedIn profile is also going to be crucial to applying for jobs when it comes to 2024. A lot of people look at LinkedIn profiles now, even more than ever. Like they go online and Google your name on social media. So that's very important. So keep that in mind. As far as social media is concerned, don't, don't cause any havoc on social media through Twitter or Facebook or any of these other applications because... A lot of job recruiters and hiring managers are looking at that. So that's very important. So that's number two, number two, your LinkedIn profile. Number three, obviously certifications is always going to be a big factor on this because um, I see people get jobs with or a lot of certification, but I'd rather you get a job, applying for a job with a certification because it increases your chances of landing a job. So whether that's studying the A plus or something else, uh, it's someone that's going to comment down below about the Google IT support course that's not being asked in the job market so um it's good to know but that's not being asked in the job market so i'm gonna i'm gonna say that right now because i know someone down in my comment below is gonna say oh what do you think of this versus a plus you know it's not gonna get you a job maybe you get super lucky and you get a job but it's definitely not gonna help you get a job just saying that right now but it's useful information it's good information to have and if you if your job or your company or your school could pay for it then go go for it and study it um yeah so certifications are important was going to be number three. Number four is going to be your resume. Resume is always going to be important because, like I tell everyone, your, if your resume sucks, no one's going to call you. 
That's just the reality of applying for jobs. So you have to have a solid resume. The resume is super duper important. Um, a lot of people, what they do is they spray and pray their resume and expecting them to get a respond. That's not going to work with anyone. <laughs> don't, definitely don't recommend doing that. Make sure your resume is IT related. A lot of people put a created resume and they're applying for IT support jobs. Just, just, I'm giving you advice based on what happened to me with somebody that I was working with. So this guy has a resume. It's cybersecurity related. Nothing to do with IT support. So he had Kali Linux, he has Splunk, he has Ronus, he has uh, some PCI stuff in there through Qualys. He has a bunch of stuff that's cybersecurity related, and he's applying for IT support. I'm like, I'm like, bro, or dude, this is not, you know, this is IT. So you're trying to apply for IT support job, but this is more like a security focus certification. Obviously, no one's gonna call you. There's, there's no Active Directory. There's no Office 365. <clears throat> there's no Microsoft Intro in there. There's no, so there's no SSCM in there. You know, obviously, they was renaming stuff. Um, ticketing systems, there's nothing there that has to do with IT support. So obviously, no one's going to call you. So what you want to do is, if you do have some cybersecurity experience, that he had like an internship, you want to have two separate resumes. One tailored to cybersecurity and one tailored to IT support. And they start applying for jobs for IT support and start applying for jobs for security. That, that changes everything. But if you have just one resume and it's only cybersecurity related, and you're applying for IT support jobs, obviously, you am like, okay, is this guy's applying for a security job? Or is he applying for a support job? So like, it's kind of like misleading, right? So that experience is good, but it's not re reflected on IT support or help desk or desktop support. So you want to keep two separate resumes, if that makes sense. All right. So that's that's the next one. The, ne the next one for me is going to be your me uh, mentoring. So if you get yourself a mentor, you know, that'd be super awesome. Like tries to find someone that actually works in the field. I'm not saying your teacher or your guidance counselor on some random Joe Schmo that has no experience in IT. Obviously, you're not going to want that person as a mentor. You want someone that actually works in the field, whether it's cybersecurity, system admin, IT support, whatever, whatever it is, get that person as a mentor, see what certifications they did, see what they're studying, see what they're working on, see what labs they're working on, and that will make you stand out and that will help you down the long run, right? And save you 100 years of headaches. Because you're already talking to someone that has the experience that has been in your shoes when you got started in IT or you're starting IT right now, right? So you get that experience from someone that already has that experience. Um, the next one for me is going to be labs. Obviously, your portfolio, your project work is extremely important. All the things that you're doing, whether it's building a home lab through Active Directory, Office 365, learning about account creation, NTFS, shared drive permissions, learning about um, creating virtual VMs and uh, Oracle Virtual Box, learning about Azure Cloud Services, learning about AWS services, learning about GCP services. All of that counts as a learning experience that you could put on your resume. It's like when you're a coder or you're a programmer, you know how you have a programmer and they have their own website and they have their own GitHub and they have their own stuff that they worked on and they share that portfolio with their with the hiring manager for a dev job. It's the same thing for IT support. Cybersecurity, your system admin. Like, what are you working on? What are you learning? And what are you doing right now? Versus just studying a certification, not doing anything, right? You want to make yourself stand out and have some sort of lab environment. Add that experience on your resume and then start applying for jobs and make sure that resume is tech related. So that's my advice for you as well. And then last but not least is networking. Like I said earlier, LinkedIn is important. Now, this is an extra step on LinkedIn is going to social events, right? B size is is cheap. B size is not that expensive. B size is like twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty dollars, up to a hundred dollars. I've seen so far. So you go to B size events. There's B size New York, B size Chicago, B size Philly, um, B size Romania. I just, I just got back from Romania a few months ago. Um, B size Tampa, right? These are cybersecurity events, right? You could go to, um, and there's also local meetups as well, right? Those things are very important. Or you could go to. I don't know, like subscribe to AWS, subscribe to certain party, third party vendors. And sometimes they'll invite you to conference events. Like I'm going to AWS Summit event this 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 month, right? So like you could always go to these conference events, bring a copy of your resume, so use hiring, you know, networking, bring bring um your portfolio with you, bring your business card with you. If you have one, bring something with you, and then you go, Oh, this is what I do. You want more information about me? Here's my card 
yada, 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 and that stuff like that. So, yeah, that's it. That's my advice for you for 2024. I know it sounds like almost similar advice to 2023, 2022, but I'm saying that the networking part is super crucial right now, especially in this job market. You do need to know someone if you're applying for a job. The only way to make yourself stand out is if you have a really good resume and that resume is tech related, but also is like at the end of the day, like you have to be unique from another person because at the end of the day, there's multiple people applying for the same job. So there's always 300, 400 applications for a specific job. So how are you different from the other candidate? Like, what are you doing? That's different, right? Make yourself stand out and that way they remember you. Anyway, with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful Saturday. Take care. Peace.